notifications. Today we're going to talk about poultry. Um, we have Henrietta here. She's going to be our demonstration. She is a Rhode Island Red that we have here on our farm. Um, we typically just use her as a little, like egg layer and we have about 20 other chickens that we keep here on our farm to, mostly just to get eggs just for our family. So whenever I was in 4-H, I actually showed chickens. I showed bantams, which are basically just a miniature version of a large fowl, which is what she is here. So we're gonna kind of walk through some parts of the chicken, and then um, we're also gonna kind of do a little bit of showmanship. That way you can kind of see what it's actually like to show a chicken. So as you can see here, this is her head. So how chickens are usually classified in addition to their breed is by their comb, which is this red piece up here. She is a single comb and then also by their legs. So there's a difference between a um, clean-legged, which is what she is, there's no feathers on her legs, but then there's actually some chickens that do have the feathers that go all the way down their legs. They look like they're wearing fuzzy boots. They're kind of cute looking. And then also the combs can come in all different sorts of sizes. There's a buttercup comb that kind of looks like a buttercup flower, that's where it gets its name. There's a piece comb, which is just a small little cushion, and there's also a cushion comb, which it can be very difficult to tell the difference between those, but that's also a question on skillathon for those of you who have ever um, taken a skillathon um, surrounding poultry. So we're gonna look at some different parts of her. So this is her wing. So actually chickens are one of the few birds that cannot fly. Um, whenever I was first showing poultry, I actually looked up what the longest chicken flight is and I tried to get my chickens to beat it. It's 13 seconds. I've never been able to beat that, but if you can do that, you should try it. Go be in the Guinness World Book of Records. So these feathers here are the long ones. These are her primaries. And then these are her secondaries back here. And this piece right here, kind of where the joint is, that's the bow of the wing. So in showmanship, the judge will often ask you to display the wing. So you want to gently pull it out here. It does not hurt the bird at all. See, she's just kind of hanging out here, letting me do what I need to do. And then you're also going to flip your hand over and display the underside of the wing. Um, an interesting thing that they often do with meat birds, she is not a meat um, breed. As I said, she's an egg, egg laying breed. Um, the large white chickens that you see at the fair, the corner shot crosses, those are our meat birds. The judges will also check underneath their wings to look for bruising and those quality defects that will affect the meat grade later on down the processing chain. So some other things about hers, we can go ahead and we can display the tail. And you'll see her fan out her tail. She's a little raggedy. She's a working girl. She's not a show girl like the um, chickens that I had whenever I was showing in 4-H, but she'll definitely serve our purpose here today. So we're going to go back to the head and look at some other parts. So these little red things underneath her beak, these are the wattles. This is her beak, obviously, and her nose holes over here. And then these are their eyelids. Chickens actually have three eyelids. They have a eyelid that comes from the top, like we do, one that comes from the bottom. And then they also have a clear membrane that kind of comes sideways on their eye to help protect them from debris. This little um, whitish red colored thing here, this is her earlobe. We don't pierce them like we do for us. And then this little hole covered here with feathers, that's actually where her ear hole is. So for a lot of animals, for identification purposes, we typically tag their ears. Obviously we can't do that with chickens. So a lot of times what people will do to identify their chickens, if they want to do that, they'll attach a metal band around their leg. It's just like a bracelet, it doesn't hurt the chicken at all. We're gonna be talking about the digestive tract of a chicken. So chickens have a pretty interesting digestive tract. They have a very different digestive tract than you and I, or cows or even dogs, for example. So whenever chickens eat, they have their beaks here. Um, as you can see, chickens don't have teeth. And also they're not really gonna do a lot of damage if they do try to peck you or bite you. I've been pecked by chickens numerous times and I've lived to tell the tale, so you don't need to worry about that. And most of the time they're pretty chill. We've been working with her for about an hour now and she's let me mess with her, no problem. So after they eat, it then goes down their throat and then it goes to something that's called a crop. So here in the crop is basically a muscular hole or sac in their digestive tract. There the food is held and then there's some digestive enzymes that are secreted that helps break it down and start the di digestion process. From there it moves on to the gizzard. Um, some of you may have heard of 
fried gizzards at KFC or things like that. So what the gizzard is, is it's a mechanical form of digestion. So chickens, they naturally eat some roughage, some little pieces of um, sticks or gravel whenever they're eating, just the, due to the nature of how they do eat. And then what that does in the gizzard is it contracts muscularly, involuntarily, and it kind of grinds up the food like our teeth do um, with those roughages and little pieces of rocks that chickens naturally have in there. It then moves on and then the chickens are better able to absorb those nutrients. And then another kind of interesting fact about chickens is they only have one exit hole, it's called a vent, and that's the same for um, most avian poultry. And so everything that comes out of a chicken, um, including eggs, all comes out the same hole. But we're gonna be talking about some different meat cuts of chickens. So this chicken here, she's a Rhode Island Red, which is um, typically considered a dual purpose breed. Um, nowadays, she's mostly considered a egg laying breed. That's what we use her here for on our farm. Um, typically, what you, whenever you think of a meat chicken, um, you think of a Cornish Rock Cross, which those are the big white birds that you typically see at the fair. Those are what um, our county fair uses as our meat birds, and that's pretty typical for the industry. But nonetheless, we're gonna use her to kind of demonstrate the different parts. Basically, the difference between her and a Cornish Rock Cross is um, they've been bred to select different genetic tra uh, traits that help them perform differently. Think of it as such as a dairy cow and a beef cow. Whenever you're walking through the barn, you see the big beefy beef cows because they're gonna be turned into beef. And then you can see a more slender, angular dairy cow. That's because um, their bodies are composed differently based on what we need them to do. So, we're gonna start with the breast, which is right here. And the breast is the most high cut, high priced cut of the chicken. So I, everyone loves chicken nuggets and chicken strips. So um, each chicken only has two chicken breasts though. So there's lots of other important parts that we need to remember whenever we're eating chicken, even though chicken tenders are very good. So a lot of times whenever the judges comes around, especially um, judging meat chickens, what they'll do is they'll go in between their legs. This isn't hurting her at all. This is very natural. She just, um, she hasn't done this in a while. She wasn't one of my show birds. So they'll hang them here and then they will feel up here in between and around the breastbone to see how much meat is there on the body. While the birds are hanging here, they can also check out the wings. Everyone loves a good chicken wing. So they'll see how much meat is here on those wings and then they can also check for some quality defects such as bruising, broken bones, and things like that that will be discounted later on in the production chain. So we'll flip her back over. <laughs> we have all sorts of animals here that want to get some little shoes short them. Down. So then we have the back of the chicken, which a lot of people <laughs> don't think of. Come on, sit down. Um, and whenever you have pieced out a chicken, that's kind of one of the pieces that gets kind of discarded or it's not one of your premium cuts. So a lot of times that will go into your processed, um, further processed chicken, your chicken chunks in a can, um, your chicken nuggets that are preformed, things like that. It's still very quality meat, but it's just not something that a lot of people want cut straight out of the chicken. Next, we'll talk about the thigh. So she has a lot of feathers on right now, so you can't really tell. But um, up here is the thigh of the bird. So a lot of times this is used a lot in Chinese cooking. Um, I personally love the chicken on a stick that's a teriyaki flavor. That's a very um, moist meat. That's because it is a thigh, which is a darker meat. Um, darker meat typically does have a little bit more flavor and juiciness. That's just due to the composition of the meat. Um, dark meat is basically it uses fat more than it uses blood, your blood sugar, your, your glycogen stores, um, which is what your white meat uses. And the more fat that's around and used in that muscle, the more flavor it is. So, and then we have our drumstick down in here. That's another form of the dark meat. So it is gonna be a little bit juicier, have a little bit more flavor, just because of that different muscle composition. 